SEMO! What's going on guys, it's Simo, and today I have for you a King of the Skull Servants deck profile. Now, I know Skull Servants aren't exactly the most known competitive archetype, but ever since Duelist Alliance came out and this card became legal, like, Skull Servants are fucking amazing, so let's get right into the deck profile. So you're gonna run three copies of King of the Skull Servant, he's your heart and soul of the deck. He gains 1,000 attack for each other Skull Servant monster in your graveyard, which you run 15 of. You run the Skull Servant King, you run the regular Skull Servant, you run Lady in White, White Mare, and White Prince, which all count as Skull Servant while they're in the graveyard. On top of that, he has the ability where if he's destroyed by battle, you can banish a Skull Servant monster in your graveyard and special summon him. And at the cost of a thousand attack points, that's nothing, because it's totally common to see your King of the Skull Servants be anywhere from six to eleven thousand in a single game. Next, we run three copies of the OG Vanilla Skull Servant. Now, he doesn't really do a whole lot on his own, but he's a really important card in this deck, which we'll get back to later. Next, we run three copies of the Lady in White. The Lady in White protects our face-up level 3 or lower zombie-type monsters by battle and by all other spell and trap effects. So it's really important to have her on the field and the King of the Skull Servants if you want your King of the Skull Servants attacks to go through. But on top of that, for being such a skinny, bony bitch, look how big of an ass she has. 2200! So many monsters have difficulty getting over high numbers like that. So having that high of a defense is really good for stalling. Next, we have three copies of probably the best card in the deck, which is White Prince. What White Prince does is, is when he's sent to the graveyard, you can send a copy of Skull Servant and the Lady in White from your hand or deck to the graveyard. Now, why this is good is because that gives your Skull Servant King immediately a 3,000 attack point boost. But White Prince can also banish himself along with two other Skull Servant monsters and special summon a King of the Skull Servants from the deck. So if your graveyard is littered with Skull Servant monsters, just banishing three of them to special summon a King is totally worth it. So finally to wrap out our Skull Servant monsters, we have White Mare. Now White Mare is really good because you can discard him from your hand and you can take one of your banished Skull Servant Kings or Lady in White and special summon them to your side of the field. You can also move a banished Skull Servant or another copy of himself to the graveyard, but that's not as good as his set other effect. Why this is good is because he combos really well with cards like White Prince, with Allure of Darkness, with Dark Arm Dragon. He's just a really good card, and plus he's a Skull Servant name, so he's really good to have. Now for the non-Skull Servant monsters, three copies of Mathematician. This is your opening play. You normal summon Mathematician, you pitch White Prince to the graveyard, which he'll trigger, which you send a Skull Servant and a Lady in White. Now, that right there is really good because you have three monsters out of your deck and ready to give 3,000 attack points to the King of the Skull Servants. On top of that, Mathematician's really good just because if he's destroyed by battle, you can draw a card. So, more cards, more fun. Mizuki is also random threes. Now, this is why we don't run Armageddon Knight in favor of Mathematician, because Mathematician can send Mizuki where Armageddon Knight cannot. Mizuki's really good because he's one of your beaters, but on top of that, you can banish him from the graveyard to special summon any of your zombie monsters. So mainly, it's going to be your Lady in White and your King of the Skull Servants. But you can also do Zombie Master if you feel it's appropriate. Then we're moving on to our one copy of Zombie Master. Now, you don't want to see this card early, but mid to late game, this card can be incredible for the combos it can set up. Sometimes you'll have your hand clogged with regular Skull Servant cards or cards you don't really need. So Zombie Master is really good for just unclogging your hand, but being able to combo into something like King of the Skull Servants or even a Mizuki for a rank 4 play. Zombie Master is really good because you can pitch White Prince to trigger his effect. So not only would you get a King of the Skull Servants out from Zombie Master's effect, but White Prince would send two more Skull Servants to the graveyard to boost that King of the Skull Servants by another 3,000 attack. To wrap out our monster lineup, we have one copy of Dark Arm Dragon. Now, I like Dark Arm Dragon in this deck as an alternate win condition in case things aren't going your way with the Kings. Because what you can do is... Besides from popping cards, Dark Arm Dragon is also really good for baiting out cards you really don't want your uh, King of the Skull Servants to run into. But one really cool combo is, say you special summon Dark Arm Dragon, so that means you have three darks in your graveyard. 
you can banish one of those darks, so let's say King of the Skull Servants, to pop a card in your opponent's field. Then you can discard White Mare to bring that King of the Skull Servants back and special summon him. And because you discarded White Mare, that King is going to have 3,000 attacks. So that puts you at 5,800 points of damage on board for essentially nothing. Moving on to the spells. Two copies of Book of Life. I mean, this is pretty self-explanatory. You're running zombies. You want to get out either your King of the Skull Servants or your Lady in White with this. Some, sometimes Mizuki, because why not? But most of the time, those are the two go-to cards. The reason Book of Life is also really good is because it acts like a DD Crow. So you can banish cards in your opponent's graveyard that you don't want them using. Next for the best card in this entire deck is two copies of Creature Swap. There is nothing better than seeing the look on your opponent's face when you summon a Skull Servant and you Creature Swap the Skull Servant to them for one of their big cards. Like, you could take their Winda, their Beals, their Judgment Dragon, and giving them a Skull Servant in replace is just the biggest dick move. But it is so good, and because Creature Swap doesn't target, it makes it an amazing card. It's also a really good way to work around the hand, since this deck can sometimes have a problem with effect negation. For the one ofs we have Allure of Darkness, this is pretty self-explanatory. Helps cycle through your deck, and obviously since you have White Mare, anything that you banish, i.e. Lady in White or King of the Skull Servants, you can just special summon it back, so it's just really good. Burial from a Different Dimension is really key to the deck, because... Since White Mare banishes three cards instantly, you can use Burial of a Different Dimension to bring those cards back to your graveyard and then boost that King's attack by another 3,000. And you can, since it's quick play, you can use it on attack declaration to boost the King by 3,000 and you can just totally sack opponents that way. They'll never see it coming. One copy of Dark Hole, pretty self-explanatory, just clearing the board for your King to just go in for game. Uh, one Foolish Burial, this is pretty self-explanatory by now. You want to pitch the White Prince most of the time. Um, depending on the situation, you might want to pitch Mizuki. Uh, but yeah, Foolish Burial is Foolish Burial. Then One for One, probably another one of the best spells in this deck. Because you can combo this up with uh, White Prince, discard it, Special Summon a King, and then White Prince Trigger, sending two more uh, Skull Servants to the Graveyard. So he has 3,000 attack at least. Um, you can just pitch your dead monsters that you don't need. Uh, one for one is just incredible in this deck. For the trap lineup, as I mentioned earlier, effects can sometimes be a problem. And so we're going to run two copies of Fiendish Chain to not only negate effects that we don't want to go off, but also to protect our monsters in case they're attacking. Then we run two copies of Wiretap. Now, even though the Lady in White is really good at stopping, um, anything from affecting our monsters, Wiretap's good for getting around cards like Solemn Warning and things like that. And even if we don't have Lady in White, our King of the Skull Servants will be able to get his attacks through. Next for the one-ups, Bottomless Trap Hole, pretty self-explanatory. Phoenix Wing Windblast is actually a really good card because, like I said, you sometimes might have cards in your hand that are clogging, um, but you can discard one of them, or even a White Prince, and then you can make your opponent go back a turn, and that's really good, so... You know, even if you're just pitching an OG Skull Servant, it's totally worth it for Phoenix Wing Windblast. And then one Solemn Warning and one Torrential Tribute to wrap out the trap lineup. So that's been the King of the Skull Servant deck profile. Let me know down in the comments what you guys think about this deck. I love this deck. It is so much fun. Give it a try out for yourself if you're feeling up to it. And yeah, make sure to thumbs up the video because that's casting your vote to see me move on to the next great Yu-Gi-Tuber. Thank you all so much for watching the video. We'll see you next time.